Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I wanted to do a breakdown of RSI subscriptions, what they're supposed to be, what perks they give, are they worth the cost, what content it's supposed to support, and my thoughts on that content, problems with it, solutions, a bit of a rant as well, and talking about Star Citizen official video content and what three million plus dollars each year is being spent on or supposed to be spent on anyway. So what are RSI subscriptions? They are voluntary monthly subscriptions that started in 2012 to help fund the Star Citizen project in very specific ways. Today, this now helps pay for video and behind the scenes content like calling all devs, around the verse, reverse the verse, ask the devs, as well as the jump point magazine, uh, which is the, the monthly digital magazine about Star Citizen. This revenue also funds the development and release of subscriber exclusive perks like the monthly Hangar Flare series, which has moved on to armors and weapons as well now. There's also some exclusive subscriber merchandise available as well, like, like t-shirts and that sort of stuff. So what do subscribers actually get? Subscriptions come in two flavors, Centurion for $10 a month, that's the sort of like standard subscribers, and then Emperator, which is $20 a month, the more premium subscribers that get a little bit more. All subscribers get a monthly newsletter detailing the additional perks that they have access to, as well as some extra news, some exclusive little behind the scenes stuff, um, some other little bits and bobs. I quite like that newsletter, sometimes it has some, some interesting bits in it. All subs also get Jump Point, Star Citizen's official digital magazine, including behind the scenes, articles and interviews into the development process of Star Citizen and Squadron 42. Subscribers can also access the entire collection of Jump Point back issues at any time. Jump Point is released the third Friday of every month. There's first wave PTU access, which sometimes I refer to as wave zero. Um, this allows you to get very early access to Star Citizen's persistent test universe. There's a monthly ship that's flyable every month, different ship. Flare, so subscribers receive an exclusive digital flare item each month from hangar collectibles to in-game special skins. These are awarded monthly. This also allows access to the flare store where previously issued pieces are available for purchase. Emperor level subscribers also receive a special variant in addition to their standard flare item. So they basically get two flare items a month rather than one. And it's normally just a slight so like color change or tweak or slight difference to that um, standard item. Subscriber flare is attributed the second Wednesday of every month. For those that subscribe over the weekend after that, you still get that flare and it will be attributed to your account or attributed, in fact, on the following Monday. There's some rec that you get given. So rec is the currency for use in Arena Commander at the moment. Centurion level subscribers get 20,000 rec a month. Emperor level subscribers get 40,000. The subscriber den. So you get access to an active uh, subscriber and dev only chat room and forum. There's early access to purchase event tickets as well. So um, things like CitizenCon, that gives you an opportunity to secure a spot before other people can. The Vault, you get access to the Vault, which contains collections of Star Citizen concept art and work and progress renderings. The Vault is updated every Thursday. There's a town hall. Now, every month there's supposed to be a town hall. Subscribers can submit questions for the developers, some of which will be answered in the monthly town hall web series. So they've actually expanded that out really now to take questions weekly for Reverse the Verse, but sometimes they have these sort of like more town hall specials as well. Uh, merchandise discounts and exclusive digital sales are also part of subscriptions. So you might have limited ship pledges through the RSI store that are exclusive as well. Talking about discounts, there's also discount coupons. After 12 months of subscription time, you are eligible for a discount coupon. The coupon is a one-time use on digital products capped at a maximum of $50 and 10% off for Centurions and $100 and 20% off for Emperor level subscriptions. These coupons can't be used on subs, rec items, merch, tickets, promo pledges, or buybacks. Emperators do get some additional perks as well. You get Emperor test flight, so you'll have one week to test fly newly flight ready ships and variants with the live quarterly releases. So literally when a patch goes live, 
all those new flyable ships and variants that they've just added, you get to um, fly them for a week. There's also some Emperor level events that they're supposed to have as well, which gives you sort of like exclusive potentials to go to studio tours around the globe and um, other upcoming events. And they are typically going to be ticketed events as well, first come, first serve sort of basis, but that's access for Emperor level people. I'm not sure if I keep on saying Emperor properly, but you know, who knows? So how much do subs generate at the moment for CIG and Star Citizen? The latest official figures we have on subscriber counts are from the 2017 financials that CIG released, and they are pulling in, apparently, over $3 million a year. Now, I would expect that figure in 2019 to have grown somewhat, maybe closer to 3.3 or 3.5 million. So, what exactly does this fund today? As of February 2019, it appears that just weekly around the verses, reverse the verse, and then the monthly regular subscriber perks are being funded by subscriptions. Around the verse is the weekly Star Citizen news and project update. They show off the latest work on the game, what's coming soon, and some deeper dives into certain features of the game and um, some ships that are coming out soon work on um, various aspects of sort of like hot topics and things that the community want to see. Reverse the Verse is typically a live questions and answers with devs about a recent topic that may have been highlighted on Around the Verse or from the forums or hot topic because a major patch is about to release or they've just had a citizen con. Sometimes these might be town halls, interviews with key devs, game dev specials where they might um, have someone from a discipline to make a new animal or little physics game so they've made a basketball mini game before and vandal hounds um crotch spiders um space whales and and more in these live past shows and some of them have been pretty damn good recently though they canned calling all devs which is actually one of my favorite shows this was pre-recorded questions from the community answered by an appropriate dev and provided a huge amount of info each week on the project it also looked reasonably low effort in production costs but provided a amazing amount of information and was just fantastic as an idea and a show it's worth mentioning that historically cig do change add evolve and remove video content and this is very likely what's going on in the background now they're trying to work out some bits of what they want to do in the future some new shows that sort of stuff the start of 2019 however has been very scarce when it comes to video content and news Around the Verse is a bit too short now. Reverse the Verse is sometimes great, but hit and miss with topics and the choice they make on those topics, in my opinion. Calling all devs being canned is lame. Once subscriptions hit a certain level, so that maybe all perks, because they need artists to make these flare and that sort of stuff, and some of the perks do require um, manpower to actually get done, uh, and that uh, Around the Verse and Reverse the Verse shows are paid for, then they should be using that additional monies to produce more shows and maybe improving quality of the current ones, providing more, not less. I would assume that they are a magnitude above what they require for their current shows. As a little suffix to that statement, I do want to say that it's quite possible that some of that money is being used on other bits I'm not aware of uh, in the background and some other content they produce is subsidized or whatever by that. I want to talk about some of my opinions and talk about are subscriptions worth it. So if you want the sub perks, you like the flair, you like the, the perks that they give, and you want to back towards those potential shows that they might produce, then subscribing may very well be worthwhile to you. It helps contribute to these major shows, but these shows are available to everyone and in turn generate Star Citizen a lot of exposure and help them make more money. It's a big part of their advertising. It would make sense for them to make them even if they were not charging subs. Ship sales get a big boost from them being covered in around the verse and ship shapes and that sort of stuff. They are generating a large amount of money from RSI subs now and I feel the current video content that CIG puts out does not reflect the amount of funding it receives. They need to provide something more again, not less. 
And that might just be a now problem. That might be the beginning of 2019 has just been a bit scarce and they are working on these shows, but they do need to provide more. In ATV, I'd like to see a couple more minutes of cool eye candy stuff in there, uh, a little bit more on um, some of the news, some of the stuff they're working on. It's supposed to be a show that gives context to the project, provides news, that's its main goal. And giving us a few little deep dives into bits and bobs, um, advertising some of the new stuff that's gonna be coming out, some of the new ships, that sort of stuff. Last year, they shortened around the verse. They were approaching like 30 to 45 minutes, some of them, they were these huge monsters um, of shows and episodes. Th they had some great content in there, but they weren't appropriate for an audience that wants to watch something quick and snappy, that wants updates, that wants news and that sort of stuff, which I, at least, thought Around the Verse was supposed to be for. Now, I thought the plan with that was to have a show that sort of like focused on the deep dives on um, like a single mechanic, ship, department, um, tool, team aspect of the game that was sort of like previously in those Around the Verse, taken out, have that, that as a separate show. You actually have that as maybe once a week as well, or every other week, you have that as a separate little module. Basically, the bits they moved from Around the Verse own show boom i supported and wanted shorter atvs but with the understanding they were going to have these bits as a separate video i know i said that in like eight different ways but i just wanted to make that very clear reverse the verse has some great moments and weeks sometimes i'm not interested in the topic though so i would like to see at least a percentage of each week used for around the verse because it's a live show to answer some of the live FAQ questions, live game design questions. This is at least a small per portion each week, just focusing on really hot topics, whatever. Answer some of these questions live or from the feeds live, whatever. Calling all devs, they should just bring back calling all devs or at least have another pre-filmed FAQ Q&A series that they do weekly. I think this was amazing for the project and for sort of like transparency. Personally, I'd also like to see a community manager or info disseminator that's sole job is to get questions answered by the devs and then post them on a weekly forum post. Here is a load of questions we got answered and, and encouraged discussion, that sort of thing. Maybe they could also actively post answers to the community and signpost around all mediums like on Twitter, on Reddit, on, um, on the forums, everywhere. Uh, I love it when some of the devs as well take to Spectrum or Reddit and chat to the community. You get some awesome info and interaction. More of this, please, where possible. One of Star Citizen's calls is the way it's involved the community in the past. And, I mean, still does. I'm just, I'm having a bit of a complaint for complaining's sake. But we need that community interaction. Questions, answers, talking points. Around the verse and reverse the verse go a long way to providing that. But they have the budget to do more. If they need to hire an additional community manager or other hires, then I think that's clearly worth it. They need to be using that budget to support that back-end content, that additional content. Another thing was Disco, the global video content manager, I think his title is now, went on a well-deserved holiday at the beginning of January, but that paused some of that video content. And I feel that that sub-funding that is provided should at least have some level of redundancy for, for content like that. Like, you don't want a lull in content. You don't want times where people complain that there is a content drought, but at least in the future. I mean, you can't do stuff about the past, but you know, um, there is an argument that some of these community shows eat into development time, but there is clearly workarounds to that and they have the funding to solve these issues. That's only going to be an issue with certain devs at certain times of the year. They just need to be utilizing those funds and giving the community a good amount of content. And if for some reason they can't do certain shows because they don't have the devs or it eats into community time, then use that money to do shows that can. They can't say that they can't do shows and still take funding for them. If that's the case, then update the subscriber perks and FAQ to state that. I feel that I can justify a good portion of previous sub money going into the cost of equipment. They do have some very high quality cameras in every studio now. They've been gearing up for a while, trying different formats, editors, 
Um, they, they, there's probably a little production team going on here as well. Maybe some of that money also finds its way to other videos, specials for uh, uh, and like trailers and stuff for Gamescom, CitizenCon, Squadron 42, Vertical Slice stuff, uh, panels, additional live streams. Someone said to me that it may have been previously used to support some of the events in the early days as well, like CitizenCon. Don't know that for sure though. So yes, for some RSI subs, it's definitely going to be worth it individually, but I do not feel they are utilizing the funding in the best possible way for video content that is supposed to be used for. At least I, as my understanding of it is, it's supposed to be used for. I don't believe that it's the case that funding supports CitizenCon or anything like that. They have separate tickets for that, though I suppose you could argue that the live streams or those events and getting the videos up later and that sort of stuff may use some sub funds. However, again, I would say that the video content and citizen con live streams generate them a butt ton of money by having them um, and it would certainly be mu much more beneficial for them to have them than not i'm personally an erratic rsi subscriber so i do subscribe sometimes and not others i want that newsletter sometimes the flare and early access to tickets jump point um, and some of the other uh, access to reading and looking at some cool stuff when i say erratic i typically subscribe for a month and only resub when I see something I want again. I'm mega thrifty. That's basically what I'm telling you. Um, I did see in Spectrum there was a survey about near future topics that you'd like to see on Around the Verse and Reverse the Verse put up by a backer. I actually think that's a great idea for getting a feel for what these shows should cover in the shorter term. But basically I just want some more community interaction when it comes to what video content should be. And I just want more of it really. I want, I want some, uh, some additional sort of like interaction with what topics are going to be on reverse the verse i want some uh, i want calling all devs back uh, i want some more shows and i think i think they should do that anyway that's my take on it and you are more than welcome to disagree or provide a different point of view or alternatives in the comments below i will have a look through all of them i will try and respond where i can and i feel it's okay for me to be wrong on certain things these are very much my opinions on that topic obviously the the starting part of it was literally what subscriptions are and are stated for being for. I'm also going to link Twerk's uh, Answer the Call series um, down below because uh, on the most recent one, he did talk about are subscriptions worth it? And I thought there was some good discussion there for people that want to go further into that debate. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway for February. It's for a Cutlass Black and Star Citizen game package. All you need to do is be subscribed to the channel and comment on any of my videos made during the month. If you don't have a gaming PC yet or you are upgrading, instead consider Shadow Cloud Gaming. They allow you to leverage the powers of the internet to stream a high-spec Windows 10 environment to any other PC, Mac or device like a smartphone or tablet. It is working really well in Star Citizen's 3.4 branch and be sure to use the code board GAMER if you do decide to check it out to get a discount. Links below. This channel exists because of its community. If you wish to support the channel further, below there are links to Patreon, Subscribestar, and there's the YouTube channel memberships, literally the join button below this video. VIPs do get some exclusive stuff and early content as a thank you as well. If you have any feedback, suggestions, or just want to say hi, please drop a comment below or poke me on discord.gg forward slash boardgamer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the verse.